Hi everyone, Dr. Nigel Guillem here, GP Training Programme Director for the St. Mary's Scheme and Course Director for Mentor MRC GP courses. So we're going to be continuing with my CSA podcast series with regards to strategic approach to the exam and how to optimise a really good pass. We're going to focus on Global Competency 2 today, which is does not recognise the issues or priorities in the consultation, for example the patient's problem, the ethical dilemma, And you're going to see how this is actually tied very closely to the interpersonal domains of 12 and 13. So competency 12 does not appear to develop rapport or show awareness of the patient's agenda, health beliefs and preferences, and 13 being poor active listening skills and use of cues, consultation appearing formulaic. So we've talked about the importance in the first podcast about following the narrative, focusing on the story before necessarily focusing on the symptom and then the system or diagnosis that might be at hand. This is not a diagnostic driven exam, it's a narrative driven exam. So if you imagine you're seeing a patient in real life, someone who's coming uh, to see you because they're worried about something, what you want to do is open up that concern in a very natural way. And again, the CSA isn't a cot. So ideas, concerns, expectations can't be forced out of context into the CSA. You want them to evolve naturally. Often you can extrapolate ice very quickly in a cot because patients patients have waited to see you. They come in and they're worried and they want to get those worries off their chest. So open questions in a cot will work well. However, we know that in the CSA, you've got to ask ICE at the right time in the right place. And actually, firstly, take a step back and think, do I actually need to ask it at all? Because sometimes it's just there. One of the big myths about this exam in the CSA is there's always a hidden agenda. There is not a hidden agenda. The agenda is hidden, if you like, behind cues. And these cues might be verbal, or nonverbal. So let's talk through a working example. We started off, I suppose, with the patient in podcast one who was complaining of a really bad headache, uh, actually fainted at the gym and has come in. Now this patient may not necessarily be particularly worried. Perhaps, actually, what they're interested in is just getting a quick fix for their headache, but you've identified enough red flags that you're actually beginning to recognize a quick fix may not necessarily be possible. So important um, when we're actually Uh, talking to the patient to see firstly if there is an active concern. Patient might say, well, you know, I'm not concerned at all. I just just want to get some stronger painkillers, actually. My main concern is that I need to be fit for work tomorrow, in which case we don't want to be forcing ice any further because it's been given to us uh, very naturally. But I suppose if a concern hasn't uh, been raised at all, it's worth, after taking your story, symptom, system approach, to say, okay, well, look, you know, thanks for coming in today. I was just wondering, had you any particular thoughts or concerns as to what was causing this headache and see what comes back? In the CSA, it's either going to be, well, I'm not really concerned about anything. You know, I just want to get rid of it. I want to get some stronger painkillers. In which case, don't be forcing any expectation questions upon this patient. But if a patient does raise a concern, If a patient says, well, actually, I'll tell you what I'm concerned about. You know, a good friend of mine was having pretty serious headaches last year. and Unfortunately, he got diagnosed with a brain tumor um, a few months ago. Again, you don't want to be forcing an expectation question upon this patient saying, well, what were you hoping we could do for you today? Because that appears completely out of context. The expectation surely is inherent in the health anxiety that's just been given to you. So the analogy of ping pong, again, really, really important. And using that health anxiety, that ping pong, to refocus your systemic red flags. We'll talk about competency four in terms of data gathering in the next podcast. But using what comes back to move your consultation forward in terms of that narrative. So if a patient says, well, you know, I am worried about a brain tumor, use that health anxiety to refocus where you're at. So don't be fishing for hidden agendas. Recognize that actually sometimes the priority of the case is just there. It may be a verbal cue that's given to you, it may be nonverbal. Try and mirror, which is say what you see, mean what you say, to open up patients' health agendas naturally. Don't force the E in terms of expectations when it comes to ICE. Remember, ideas and concerns come before expectations. So it's all about cues, verbal, nonverbal, mirroring. Say what you see, mean what you say, use those cues to forge your history. Don't go looking for any hidden agendas and recognise the case at face value. Strategically, what you want to be doing is highlighting competency two before you examine this patient. Because as mentioned in the first podcast, if you get marked down in one or two, it's going to be very difficult to pass. You become a borderline candidate because global competencies one and two are the most important competencies. So do a strategic summary. So, Mr. Smith, before I examine you today, I guess the main thing I'm hearing is that you're really concerned about what's causing this headache, given what happened to your friend and the fact that he had a brain tumour. 
I'm going to readdress your agenda. Okay, I'm going to readdress this worry, but let me examine you at this point. So on subsequent podcasts, going to start looking, obviously, at the data gathering to help us readdress this agenda, and then we'll start moving on to the management aspects too. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Look out for the next one shortly. Do check the website for updates and course details, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Over and out.